Hello all, it's James Johnson, and welcome back to my coverage of Planet Zoo. This time around, we're going to the third step in the tutorial missions, and that is Panda Park. So we're going to go meet good old Bernard Goodwin at his newest zoo uh, somewhere in China. Let's, let's get it started. Pandas. <laughs> They're my daughter's favorite animal. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that if ever there was an animal which has captured the public's imagination, it's pandas. Oh, well, that's assuming you ignore cats and dogs, obviously. It'll take more than a cute bear to knock them off of the top spot. <laughs> oh, but did you know? Thanks to the incredible conservation work that's being done in China and around the world, pandas are no longer endangered. <laughs> Amazing! That said, they're still considered vulnerable. So, this zoo is extraordinarily lucky and honored to be part of that conservation effort. It really speaks to our reputation. A reputation that you're going to be in charge of maintaining, along with all the uh, general maintaining, too. I really can tell you how important the welfare of those pandas is. Oh, wait, I can. <laughs> it is vitally important. The eyes of the world are on you, my friend. Although, <laughs> perhaps more pressingly, the eyes of Nancy are on you, too. <laughs> Welcome to China. This is Bernie's brand new Panda Celebration Zoo. So new, in fact, that it's not quite finished. But we'll deal with that later. First, let's take a tour of the zoo. All right, Nancy. Oh, you're not going to give me a locate button. Oh, yeah, you are. Obviously, the giant pandas are the main attraction for this zoo, and luckily for us, we have one which was born just a few days ago. Let's go and have a look at it. Go on, don't be shy. Select the panda cub. Already did, Nancy. As usual, I'm way ahead of you. Oh, doesn't it just warm the cockles of your heart? So cute! Did you know that giant pandas, or Ileropoda marinaluca, if we're being formal, are the only entirely herbivorous bears. They can actually eat up to 38 kilos of bamboo a day. <laughs> Not that surprising, given that they'll spend up to 14 hours a day chomping away. I don't imagine this little fluff ball has that kind of appetite yet, though. No, probably not yet. Oh, no. I just got word from one of our keepers that a sable antelope was placed into a habitat without going through quarantine first, and that they're displaying signs of disease. We'll have to move them into quarantine to yep. stop the infection from I spreading bet to you the don't have animals. a building built yet, have to you? To do that, go to the highlighted habitat, find the infected animal, and then select them to bring up their information panel. Good. Now click move and then transfer them into quarantine. I've highlighted the quarantine facility in the zoo for you. Wait, there's only one animal in here. Oh, 
Phew, that's a relief. Now that we've stopped the infection from spreading any further, we need to build a vet surgery so the antelope can be treated and then returned to his habitat. I've already highlighted where I'd like you to build it, so why don't we head over there? In order to build the vet surgery, click on Facilities, Staff Facilities, and then Vet Surgeries. That's the job? Vet surgeries play a very important role in a zoo, as they're the only places that vets can treat the animals. Once there's room for the antelope, the vet will pick them up from quarantine and bring them to the surgery. Hmm. Yes, diseases can spread through a habitat quite easily, especially if the water inside it isn't being cleaned regularly. As it happens, I just got a report that one of our water treatment facilities has broken down, and the water in the flamingo and saltwater crocodile habitats has gotten dirty. I've highlighted the water treatment facility for you, so you should go and check it out. Click on the water treatment facility to bring up its information panel. Yes, I don't think you need a degree in mechanics to tell that this thing's thoroughly banjaxed. Click call mechanic to get them to come over and fix it for us. So, just to explain, water treatment facilities work in a similar manner to power sources, in that they have a radius of influence around them. That means, any body of water which is even partly within that radius will be cleaned automatically. Also, like power sources, if they get damaged, that radius of influence will shrink, meaning that it might stop cleaning water sources which were only just within its reach. If you want to check how much of your zoo is covered by your water treatment facilities, then there's a heat map you can use to see the coverage. That way, you can quickly spot problem areas and rectify the issue. Good work. Now that the water treatment facility has been repaired, the water will be cleaned up in two shakes of a lamb's tail. <laughs> you can also use mechanics to repair power facilities, transport rides, bins, benches, signs, and, as you already know, habitat barriers. Now, I'll be honest, I'm still a little worried about that disease scare we had, so I think we should do some research into it. Doing research into a disease can help prevent future outbreaks of it. And even if we do have an outbreak, it'll make the disease much less potent. I'd like you to start some research into border telosis. Disease research can be found in vet research, so head over to your research center and get one of the vets researching it. Lovely job. Once that research is complete, I expect we'll send that disease packing in no time. That was a close-run thing with those antelopes. <laughs> I dread to think what might have happened if you hadn't got them into quarantine as quickly as you did. Fast thinking there. We had a horrible outbreak of viral gastroenteritis here at Goodwin House. Although, luckily, <laughs> that was just limited to me and my wife. And finally, assign a mechanic to research souvenir shops by dragging and dropping them onto it. I can't wait to see what they come up with. Great stuff. That research will take a little while, so let's have a look at something else in the meantime. Because we've had some good news. It turns out that we're allowed to adopt more giant pandas. The authorities have given us three females to help with our breeding program. Even so, I'm sure you know how notoriously difficult it is to get pandas to breed, so we'll have to be patient. Our current giant panda habitat is full to the brim, but luckily we've already got another habitat ready to go. But before we move our new pandas in, they'll need to go through quarantine. Of course, we can't do that until we've accepted them. So open up Animal Trading and go into the Animal Reward section.
Finally, we can send them from animal storage to quarantine. To do that, just select them in animal storage, then click send to zoo, and then click on the quarantine facility in the zoo. Don't worry, I've highlighted it for you so you can find it easily. While we wait for them to clear quarantine, you should set up their new habitat so they feel at home in there. I'll also need you to bring over one of the male pandas from our other habitat, but because without him, we're not going to have much of a breeding program, are we? <laughs> so go on, move him over and get everything set up for your pandas.
wants a little bit more coverage. He doesn't like those watermelons. Our new female pandas have been given a clean bill of health. You'd best move them into the new habitat so they can settle in. And I hope you've made their habitat as comfy as possible, because animals will only breed if they're happy. I think they'll be really happy in there. Fingers crossed we'll see some lovely new cubs sooner rather than later. Right. While they're being delivered, we'd better get on with something else. Oh, dear me. There's never any time to rest when you're running a zoo, is there? Well, unless you hit the pause button. Okay, I think it's time I taught you all about work zones. I know, they don't sound as interesting as the animals, but trust me, they're ever so useful. You see, work zones are a way of making sure that your staff concentrate on specific habitats or tasks within the zoo, so they aren't wandering off elsewhere when it's time to feed the animals or the like. So let's start by creating a new work zone and then assigning a keeper to it so that they know to look after the new pandas. To do that, go into the zoo section, then click on staff and then work zones. Now, click on New Work Zone. To set up your new work zone, I'll need you to select the highlighted habitat gate, staff room, and keeper hut. Oh, and don't forget to name it something useful. <laughs> Once you're done, just go ahead and exit the work zone creator. Now let's hire a new keeper and assign them to our new work zone. We don't want them getting distracted by other goings on in the zoo. Go on, hire one. Then click on your new keeper to bring up their information panel and go to their employment tab. At the bottom, you can assign them to your new work zone from the drop-down menu. There you go. Now your keeper will focus his attention on our new pandas. Oh, and just so you know, all types of staff can be assigned work zones. Just make sure that they have access to all the buildings that they need. And one last thing. You might find it faster to assign them from the work zones tab in the staff section of Zoo Management. That'll save you having to chase around selecting your staff one by one. Oh, it sounds like the brand research has been completed. You should collect your rewards. And you can do that by clicking on the notification or by going back into mechanic research. Now that we've got our lovely new Just a Memento shop designed, you should build one of them near the zoo's exit. That way the guests won't miss it on their way out and we won't miss out on their money.
ever so wonderful that to. is. Anyway, I'm just off for a moment, but I'm sure I'll have some more jobs for you to look at shortly. Oh, those pandas look just adorable. <laughs> I can see why people keep foolishly forgetting that they're wild bears. And good work on that new gift shop branding. Just a memento. <laughs> Very clever. Much better than our old overpriced gifts branding. <laughs> I'm all for truth in advertising, but it was perhaps a little <laughs> on the nose. Back as promised. Right. I'd like you to increase the number of different species in the zoo. Now, you can find out what species are already in your zoo by going into the zoo section and then into the animals area. And if you're wondering how you're going to fit them all in, then mixed species habitats are a great way to save space and create interesting habitats. Just make sure to check the Zoopedia to find out which species enjoy living together. E.g. don't mix lions with antelopes. Why not? Sounded like a great idea to me.
I'm sure you know by now how to make your animals happy. So you'd best get that sorted before the inspector gets here. Sorry, did I not mention there was an inspector coming? <laughs> oh dear. Looks like you've got everything humming away nicely. Well done. Ooh, well, it seems that with our new pandas and other species, we've attracted lots and lots of new guests. Let's work on making sure those guests are kept happy. That means making sure they have great views of the animals, lots of places to buy food and drink, and, well, lots of places to get rid of food and drink. <laughs> Toilets. You should think carefully about where to put your guest facilities, though. For instance, don't put all of the food shops in the same place. Just look at how the guests are distributed around the park and put your facilities where they'll be needed the most. As long as you remember to pay attention to what the guests are thinking, you'll soon have a handle on what everyone wants. Ik 
Oh, sounds like the inspector's almost here. Now, I fully expect you to pass with flying colors. Anything less, and I might have to organize a little job exchange scheme for you with whoever's mucking out the pandas.
I've given you everything I can give you, so... Wants a little more coverage, evidently. Oh, no, I 
actually wants less coverage. Not much I can do for you at this point in time. soil. Meal quality blows. I can do for you guys.
Alright, what's wrong with him? Goodness, you know, I really can't believe just how much you've come on during our time together. <laughs> it goes to show, Bernie's got a keen eye for talent. Oh, and speaking of Bernie, he's not finished with you yet. He's got a new job for you in Canada. I get the feeling that you'd best pack a warm coat. In Canada, you say? Listen, it's been wonderful getting to know you, and I'm sure we'll meet again. But in the meantime, good luck. Thanks, Nancy. And, uh, your job is mine, by the way. I've been told that there are smiles on the faces of all of the guests. And that's a real testament to the hard work you've put into this place. And if anything, I hear the animals look even happier. <laughs> Although, in all honesty, it's, it's hard to tell with the pandas. They're so, uh, <laughs> enigmatic. Now, I'm told that Lin Lin's quite the character, though. Oh, oh, she's really been a hit with the visitors. You could even say the business is bam booming. <laughs> and, fingers crossed, we might even be able to feature pandas at some of my other zoos. Now that you've shown everyone, we know how to cater for their welfare. I shouldn't be surprised, though. After all, you've become a very capable trainee zoo manager. I suspect there isn't a single task I could throw at you which you wouldn't handle with aplomb. That said, I think the next one's gonna be a bit of a curveball. <laughs> Okay, so this has been the third uh, and last tutorial for managing zoos inside of Planet Zoo. Honestly, really didn't have any issues with this particular tutorial at all. Other than, to be honest, this tutorial felt kind of... Uh, Repetitive, like it really didn't go over anything new. Um, I, I felt like the first two tutorials built upon each other, and this one just kind of was a recap of the first two tutorials. Uh, anyway, though, 
I think the tutorials still do an excellent job of teaching you how to play the game, and they should definitely be utilized, played, gone through before starting your Planet Zoo experience, especially if you're new to Planet Zoo or Planet Coaster or Frontier in general. Uh, definitely take advantage of the tutorials. Otherwise, if you're like a returning vet that's coming over for Planet Coaster, um, it's still useful because most of the information that's in it is about managing the zoo, not really building or how to construct things or how to do the pathing or any of those things that you probably already have a firm grasp on coming from Planet Coaster. So even for you guys, I think these tutorials are still use, useful. Anyway, I'm James Johnson, a.k.a. Sulfur Blade. This is my content. Hopefully you're enjoying it. If so, please leave a like and subscribe. And until the next time, all, peace.